Hey guys, Zibo Yay or just Zib is fine, and today I'm wearing color. Honestly, I, I should have worn this V neck for Saw 5 for the extended pun, but uh, but this isn't about Saw 5, it's about its worthy successor. I guess, Saw 6. Now going into Saw 6, I was a bit hopeful. Saw 5 returned the series to a structure similar to that of the original trilogy, but my hopes for Saw 6 didn't last long. That's right, we're back to plot insignificant opening kill. Only one of you may pass. What suspense, I wonder which plot irrelevant character will survive. And yes, they've retconned another death. Detective Hoffman? Paris. She doesn't affect the plot much, so she might have not even been in the original concept. Personally, I think someone was just looking over the story until they said, hey, this isn't as engaging without a recognizable character. So they brought Perez back to fill that space. As for Hoffman, he's still slick. Who did this? Jigsaw. You didn't cut your own arm off? Inconspicuous. He wanted us to learn. And did you? Would you ever believe this guy's jigsaw? Also, I guess Jill and Hoffman have been working together? All you need to know is that from now on, I control all aspects of the game. It's not what John wanted. Not what John wanted? He gave the folder for the fifth game to Hoffman. If he wanted Jill in control, wouldn't he have given it to her? From now on, I work alone. This break-off would mean more if we actually knew they were working together before. The main character for the game plot is this jerk insurance agent who works at Umbrella. Unfortunately, when we reviewed your claim, we discovered that you failed to mention a previous condition. I have heart disease. It has nothing to do with some oral surgery I had 30 years ago. One of the things the previous movies did was emphasize the main character's human qualities first and foremost. This is what they do, man. They kidnap you and drug you. Before you know it, you're lying in a bathtub and your kidneys are on eBay. This helps you quickly identify with the character. Imagine if the first Saw started with Adam spying on Lawrence and Lawrence cheating on his wife. It'd be a bit harder to identify with them at the beginning. And that's the case with the main character of this movie. He's two-dimensional, you're introduced to why he's going to be put in the game at first, and there's just not much to find out about him later on. Oh, you really fooled me. Jigsaw's always packing heat when kidnapping his victims. As for the game, the writers return to the comfort of creative bankruptcy. Whoa. That's right, we're back to speed dating characters. You meet them, now they're dead. This setup's problematic nature was present in Jeff's plot and perfected in Saw 4 which I've already covered. That's one of the reasons why I changed my review formats. I can't go chronologically in order of the movie if I'm repeating most of what I said before. But I'll say what I can about the game now. Honestly, the presentation is good at rallying suspense. The first game uses silence urging the viewer to anticipate the next move. The chaotic interjections in the merry-go-round game do well to overwhelm you. However, even if the directing leans well to suspense, if the script doesn't, there's no such effect on the audience. Suspense is built on stakes and when what we have to lose our characters with barely 10 seconds of development, there isn't much. The scenes try to drag out suspense, but when there is none, the scenes just drag. I think the worst of it is the merry-go-round scene. You don't even know her, Mr. Easton! Okay, okay, my parents are sick, okay, they need me, I'm all they have! Without any investment, the screams of these characters don't add to your suspense, they add to your annoyance. But the director can only do as well as the script he's given, and this time the director is Kevin Gruder, an editor since Saw 1 up until Saw 5. You may think Hackle stepped down from director to production designer again, but that's not the case. Returning from Saw 5 to Saw 7 is the new production designer Tony Iani, whom I don't want to be rude, but I think his contributions to the series are the worst. If I'd have to say my favorite production designer of the series, I'd probably go with Julie Berghoff. She gave objects familiarity with the dark, stark recreation. I mean, really, is there anywhere more memorable than the bathroom from the first movie? And is there any trap more iconic than the reverse bear trap? Not to underscore score hackle, I think he kept up with the recreational designs well, such as the house and shotgun collar. But looking at Ayani's designs outside of one trap, does any of this look memorable? The details of the environments in the first four movies gave the setting 
contains so much character that the empty rustic walls of Ioni's designs just lack. It makes just looking at Saul 5 through Saul 7 dull. Back to the story, there's three people at the end of his game, one of which is a reporter. And I kinda compliment the last movie for having a sort of foreshadowing cameo to her. But these characters' scenes are boring and they don't really do anything until the very end. Uh, apparently Hoffman learned how to control elevators. But just like the game, there's another key feature to the series, inflating John's past. Until a person is faced with death, it's impossible to tell whether they have what it takes to survive. I see where Hoffman learned his subtlety. Monthly payments multiplied by lifespan minus the probability of illness. And if the sum is positive, we consider coverage. Who devised that formula? Realizing this man's nothing but a scam artist, John promptly signs up for his insurance. My requests for coverage have all been turned down. With the development of your cancer, it's simply not feasible for wait, 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 wait. What's not feasible? Who would have thought? And you seemed like such a swell guy. And this time Amanda gets in on the flashback action too. I miss the isolation of her flashbacks in Saw 3. They did really well to convince you of her obsession with John. Because of that, I don't like seeing her interact with characters who weren't even relevant as of Saw 3. Some of these flashbacks go into the making of Saw 3. <laughs> Amanda was a character developed without Hoffman in mind. She was like John's only daughter, someone who he put all his cards into. But now that we know Hoffman was in the picture, it makes her character in retrospect feel less special. If you switch the gear ratio, you have to change the gear grease to match the increased friction. Maybe you should stick to the heavy lifting. But Hoffman's so much more than that. He sets pins down. He's such an important asset. So when's your test, detective? I don't need one. Because I didn't take my life for granted. I just love Amanda in this scene. What do you know about life? Her intimidating and jealous character is spot on with her portrayal in Saw 3. But the flashback goes downhill. If Jill was still meeting John at this time, it gives John less of a reason to longingly fantasize about her just hours later. Nearing the end of the movie, the FBI close in on Hoffman, and Hoffman's plan, uh, not as good as in the last movie. And that's to say the very least. Have a look. So Hoffman uses Strom's hand for fingerprints, but doesn't that make it more suspicious for Jigsaw to flaunt his fingerprints? And with only one hand? Hmm, it seems Strom's so good at being Jigsaw, he's literally doing it with one hand tied behind his back. And it doesn't help his cover at all. What'd you find? An abnormality in Strom's fingerprint. In fact, it impedes it like the stupid plan it is. When he left his fingerprints on the latest victim, Strom was already dead. Hoffman getting caught should be rewarding, like someone actually outsmarting him. But instead, it's CSI sort of TV magic voice modulation that corners him. Right now, you're feeling helpless. And he just kills them. <laughs> Character being brought back from the dead just to die. Hmm, feels familiar. The scene makes me question the point of Saw 5. Okay, they introduced the box in that movie, but it's really only relevant in this movie, so they might as well have introduced it here. But anyways, the main point of Saw 5 was pinning it on Strom, but with this ending, we've reversed the effects of that. People know it's Hoffman now. I can't help but feel we could have had Strom hunting down Hoffman and Hoffman getting caught in one plot. It would have been more condensed and lacked this frame Strom detour. But my biggest issue with this scene is that Hoffman kills people. He goes against the jigsaw mantra. Killing is distasteful. <laughs> well, they established some ulterior motives to Hoffman being jigsaw earlier. As a human being, do you like how brutality feels, Mark? But this begs the question, why does Hoffman carry out John's will? He's not intimidated by Jill, he certainly doesn't think highly of John's policy. When Hoffman, aka new Jigsaw, just does old Jigsaw's plans, it takes away the personal stakes from the game. It makes Hoffman feel less grand of a character. I appreciate giving him a distinction in this movie, but without his own agenda, what's his point? The twist this time around is that who you thought was the insurance guy's family really isn't. You just killed me. Come on. 
Oh, and the reporter is his wife. And then we get... Will you grant this man the opportunity to continue living? The choice is yours. Absolutely the dumbest twist of the series up to this point. It's not my game. So John was like, we're gonna have all these traps, get all these people, he's gonna live and learn how to appreciate life. But nah, it's up to these other people if he lives or not. I can't kill him. I can't. It's the biggest waste of time. If it wasn't his game, why not just start him in that room? I'd be more willing to overlook this if the family faced consequences. What if Acid showered them after the kid chose death? It would adhere to Jigsaw's contempt towards killers. But either way, it matters even less because once again, the game plot doesn't affect the outside plot. It's not like Jill's mad at him for it and the cops never even come close to finding out about it. There isn't a reason to have any game in the plot outside of just obligation. And as for the outside plot, well... You were with Cecil the night Jill lost Gideon. Go, go, go! Kill Linden, or I will tell John what you did. Honestly, I wish they had just left this out. Amanda had enough reason to kill Lynn. She was jealous at a moment where she was feeling peak emotions. They didn't need to invent this alternate reason. But once again, with no evidence to support this in Saw 3 and just the fact that what Saw 3 presented was more appealing, it's an addendum past that doesn't lend itself to believability. As for the rest of the ending... This is John's will. I can lie. It's kind of cool. You feel you now have control, don't you? You think you will walk away untested. Knowing that Hoffman hasn't been tested develops this line. Hoffman's emerging arrogance in this movie gives you a better understanding of why John would test him. And I like how he's able to cheat his game, something that hadn't been done in the series up to this point. But I mean, is it really a test? There's no key, there's no way he can get out, he's meant to die. Why would John put this in his will? And shouldn't testing Hoffman, one of the only candidates to continue his legacy, be a higher priority than some of these other people? Hmm, I don't know. Seems like you should have done it before you died. But that's the end of the movie. Or is it? Don't trust the one who saves you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why they did this at all. It's not like the girl tips the cops about Hoffman in this or the next movie, so... As you can tell, Saw 6 wasn't my cup of tea. It... Actually, I'll handle it from here. It's not my review. So Saw 6 was a phenomenal movie. I mean, it wasn't my game. Oh, what a great twist. Uh, hey, why am I reused footage? In my last review, I questioned if Saw 6 would go for a story like the original trilogy or stick with the gory direction that the series seemed to be headed in. It went with the latter. And for a gore movie, it gives more than Saw 5 did. Although the effects and absurdity don't match up to that of the fourth movie. Now the story is worse than the mediocrity that was Saw 5, but I can see how Saw 6 is better in that it at least appeals all the way to one crowd. But with a lacking plot, characters you can't invest yourself in, and the fact that half the story is pointless, yeah, this movie continues the tropes of the series that I hate. And with that, I read through the script. So for a close, I'm winging it. Next movie up is the final chapter. Will it be better? Probably not, but we're gonna see how it fares anyway, close off this retrospective, but not really, next time. Zibble bye bye!